we uh, did not continue working with non-infenol, but we switched to uh, bisphenol A, or BPA for short. And uh, most of our work is, uh, has been dedicated to find out what is that bisphenol A did from the point of view of public health at large and experimental biology in particular. The reason to choose bisphenol A is because some years after this discovery of non-infenol, I mean, non the accident happened in 89, and so now we are in 1995, and in those years what we did is to take, as they say, a lemon and make lemonade. Because the um, experiments that Carlos was referring to, that we used to, the test that we used to purify the inhibitor, obviously was a, an excellent test to detect estrogenicity, whether a chemical was an estrogen or not. So we call it the E-screen test, so E-screen. And with it, we discover several uh, estrogens. And that was uh, something that happened after uh, participating in the Winspread conference in 91. We came up with a list of large volume chemicals, and we tested them, and we find that cer found that certain chemicals that uh, are found in the environment were estrogenic. So we were thinking which one to use. And meanwhile, another group published that polycarbonate plastics shed bisphenol A. And we were very interested. Now we call it BPA. In everyone for short calls bisphenol A BPA. Polycarbonate cannot may be made without bisphenol A. So therefore, we realized that this should be one of the most uh, widely used plastics, and therefore it was the best candidate to try to get close to the human situation. So that is why we choose BPA. BPA was synthesized in the 30s, I think it was 34, 35. And it was one of the first artificial estrogens. It was synthesized to be used as an estrogen. And the group in uh, the UK that uh, synthesized this compound then realized that there were other compounds that share the basis of the structure that are much more potent. So they used the other ones, among those diethylestylvestrol, as estrogens. But everyone knew, even if you wanted to read the bibliography of that time, that bisphenol A was an estrogen. However, it was very uh, found to be useful to make polymers, and therefore bisphenol A was used to make polycarbonate plastics. So you see, here it was rediscovered to be an estrogen, but even at the beginning, we should have known better and not use it in the synthesis of plastic. These plastics are all over. They, we are constantly uh, touching them, uh, drinking from containers that shed them. So. Uh, as Zana said, they, this BPA, or bisphenol A, are units of a larger compound, which is the polycarbonate. For example, all the uh, carboys where we have water usually ha are made up of this. And many of the plastic bottles that are being used are made up of polycarbonates. Uh, they are pre present in paper in Xerox machines, the, the, the um, ink. Well, it's used as a, excuse me, it's uh, used as a, disp a dispersant, like when you photocopy or the carbon copies of a bill, uh, you need the carbonless 
copies. Uh, you need to have something that disperses the ink, and apparently that contains bisphenol A. Not apparently, it was reported to contain bisphenol A. So the problem is uh, a little different than what was thought some years ago, where people thought that the exposure is through food and drink, and is mostly due to can linings and uh, bottles, etc. And now uh, we are starting to find that it could also be absorbed through skin. I mean, it's not published yet, but some people uh, have presented in uh, scientific meetings that they see transdermal um, absorption. This research is moving on and on and on, and I would say that it's very difficult for people that want to have all the evidence today realize that we will never err being uh, or interpreting it because every day we find out that it's worse than what we thought the day before. For example, uh, uh, in addition to what Anna mentioned, the, the sealants that are being used uh, for uh, treating caries, they also contain bisphenol A. And uh, sometimes we have uh, mothers calling us asking uh, whether they have to ask their dentists what kind of bisphenol A they are using, or whether they should be using bisphenol A. And this is something that is beyond our, uh, beyond our control to tell them what to do, because this is not uh, the function that we have to uh, put uh, on, on, on the table. This is something that we have already been uh, uh, abundant, made abundantly clear and it is the regulators who uh, uh, are the ones that have to impose on society certain rel uh, rules that require that we should not be exposed to these chemicals.